What's going on YouTube? OCD for EDC here. And what I got for your face balls today, we're going to be talking about smallish EDC knives, two of them to be exact. And these both fall into the category of serious performance knives. They are not uh, beautiful knives. They are not uh, aesthetically pleasing. But if you're looking for something to be just a badass pocket carry that uh, has amazing abilities, uh, we're going to say, um, yeah, amazing abilities to cut uh, just about anything you come across. These are two of the baddest knives that you could get your hands on right here. So first off, we have the Spyderco Para 3. This happens to be the Maximet version. Now, this particular model has got some mods and stuff on it. I acid washed the blade. It's got my CME on there. If anybody doesn't know what that is by now and wants to check it out, go check out our website, ocdforedc.com. And that is called the CME, or Compression Made Easy. Uh, but this is the Para 3 standard ver variant uh, G10 handle in Maximet blade steel. This, if you don't know, is the Sandrine Knives Torino, and this is rocking a tungsten carbide blade. So very, very different. It's very different in chemical makeup, uh, but uh, an absolute beast when it comes to cutting performance. So we are gonna talk about both of these knives this will really be kind of a review of the Sandrine knives here, but we're going to compare it a lot to this knife right here because they have a lot of similarities. So first up, we're going to run over the uh, specs on these two knives and just get into it here. So what we're looking at, we have an overall length of 7.062 inches on the pair of three, and it is 6.922 inches. So a very slight difference. Most of that comes right back here in the handle. Uh, on the pair of three, it's just got just a tiny bit uh, longer handle. Uh, handle length here on the pair of three is 4.286 inches. And on the Sandrine Torino is 4.015 inches. Blade length, and that's measuring from uh, the furthest most point on the G10 on the Torino is 2.907. So this is definitely gonna be legal in your three inch uh, and under areas, as well as the pair of three also going to be legal. I got some oil and junk on the blade here, but uh, on this knife here, uh, blade length is 2.876. So we actually have a longer blade on the Torino, uh, but a longer handle on the pair of three. Uh, Handle thickness, uh, we have on the Torino, uh, 0.396 inches, so just under four tenths of an inch. And on the pair of three, uh, we have uh, 450 thousandths, uh, 0.45 inches. Uh, blade stock thickness, on the pair of three, we have a blade stock of, of 140 thousandths. And on the Torino is a blade stock of 50 thousandths all the way. So this blade has zero distal taper to it, So, but it's only 50 thousandths of an inch thick. So very, very thin. Um, and we're gonna get into why that is here in a little bit. Uh, behind the edge thickness, this is where these vary quite a bit, but yet it's, it's not nearly as uh, critical as you might think. So on the Torino, uh, we have a behind the edge thickness of 12 thousandths, which is very, very consistent. And on the Para 3, we have a behind the edge thickness of 24 thousandths. So uh, behind the edge thickness here is twice on the Para 3 what it is on the Sandring. Uh, but we're going to talk about that in a moment as well. Uh, weight on these two knives. Uh, so let's uh, get them closed up here and we'll throw them on the scale and see where we're at. Now I think the Para 3 is slightly heavier. Hopefully you guys can see this on the screen. Uh, so what we have here is 99.33 grams or 3.5, basically three and a half ounces, 3.503. Now I've added a little tiny bit of weight here with this piece of G10. This also has an aftermarket clip on it. I'm pretty sure this is an MX gear, uh, MXG gear clip. Uh, so 
three and a half ounces essentially for the pair of three. Uh, for the Torino, we're looking at 2.322 ounces or 65.84 grams. So definitely lighter weight on the Torino, a little thinner and slimmer in hand. Now the scales on the Torino are contoured in this way. Uh, to me, it's a little bit on the small side uh, for my hand, but in the choked up position, it does work very well. Uh, the pair of three uh, equally as ugly, you know, in my opinion, both these knives are, are ugly as sin. Uh, but I appreciate them both for what they're bringing to the table uh, as far as performance is concerned. Uh, so as far as price is concerned on these two knives, uh, this particular Para 3 variant uh, right at the moment of filming this video, you can purchase this particular knife with the Maximet blade steel. Uh, it's $213.50. And the Sandrin Torino is $199. So very, very similar in cost uh, between these two knives. So they stack up very, very well with one another. Uh, both have got deep carry pocket clips. Well, I have a deep carry on the Para 3 now. Uh, it does not come with a deep carry clip, but there are certainly many on the market. Uh, on the Sandrine, it is a full deep carry clip. Uh, which I really like to see. This clip works extremely well, uh, just functions perfectly. Uh, they did a really great job of countersinking and recessing the screw as well as the clip itself. So the clip fits into this uh, area right here. It is reversible for right or left tip up carry. On the pair of three, uh, we have four way uh, clip here. So you can go right or left, tip up, tip down. You have all the options. And like I said, uh, this is um, an aftermarket clip. There are certainly many different uh, styles available. I personally like this one uh, quite well on the Para 3 frame. And it works extremely well. Also, the CME. Of course, I'm a little biased there, but uh, I love that as well. So if you're looking to get just the most performance or bang for your buck, then I'm going to say the Torino is the way to go because to get a deep carry clip, you're going to spend another, you know, $25 to $45, depending on which clip you buy. Plus getting a CME for it, which I would highly recommend. Uh, you know, so you're going to end up with more money wrapped up into the Para 3 if that is your jam uh, versus the Sandrin Torino. Uh, just $199 bucks and rock it the way that it came. Now, I've heard multiple people talk about the aesthetics of this knife uh, and the way that the G10 is milled here. So this is actually G10. A lot of people think that it's FRN just because of the way it looks. The milling pattern that's on there, it does look like injection molded plastic. It's not, it is definitely uh, G10. Uh, so it's very rigid, uh, super lightweight as you saw. And, and it works well, provides a lot of uh, grip and traction in the hand. You know, your fingers kind of land in these recessed uh, portions. I like it in this choked up position, which the forward choil is plenty uh, generous. And then you've got this kind of dipped out area with some jimping up on the spine. Personally, I would have liked it if they continued the jimping. Uh, the jimping stops right here. And if you look at where my thumb wants to be it's up in this area and because the blade is only 50 thousandths the whole way uh, there's not a whole lot to to get a hold of out there but it works well now we've got a brand new lock design on the torino uh not so different um, you know in, in its function uh the way that it operates you know just this up here pulling back on this action um but theoretically, it's, uh, it's very similar to other lock designs in the way that it's capturing the blade. But we're going to open that up and I'll show it to you, uh, as well as a few other things. So in my opinion, both of these knives fall into the category of being like the Lotus Esprit of the sports car world. You know, the thing's ugly. Um, I'm sure there's some people out there that love the way a Lotus uh, looks, but... But it wasn't made to be a show car. You know, it, it, they were made to be uh, a track weapon. And these right here 
are made to be users. That's what their job is. That's what they're supposed to do, and they do it very well. Both of these knives have really, really good ergonomics in hand. They're both very comfortable, both extremely secure uh, in in hand, and and are going to cut with you know arguably this is really kind of the pinnacle uh, when it comes to edge retention here for both of these knives. Uh, you know, yes, there are things like CPM 125 CV uh, um, or S125 V, I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, S110 V, there's, there's several different uh, uh, variations out there of other steels, but Maximet is, is really about the pinnacle. Um, you know, K390 can get close, uh, but, but I, I think most people would agree that these two blades right here are about as good as you're going to get, especially in a three inch pocket knife. There aren't too many three inch pocket knives out there that have this type of, of edge retention. Actually, there are none. Uh, we're, this is it. Uh, Spyderco makes a couple of variants uh, like Adelica in K390. Those are certainly going to have really good edge retention, but, but I think this is the pinnacle right here. On to the tungsten carbide here. Uh, a lot of people will say that this is not actually steel. Um, that's kind of misleading, um, in my opinion, because, you know, it's not steel in the traditional sense, uh, but magnets do stick to it. Um, it is metal. Uh, tungsten is a metal. And this is equal parts. Tungsten carbide is equal parts tungsten and carbon. So the two are centered together. So by nature, uh, this is kind of, uh, you know, powder, powder metallurgy uh, just by nature. Uh, and then uh, centering, if you're not a familiar, is a process by which you're joining uh, the carbon and tungsten atoms um, and fusing them together below the actual melting point. So you're not melting the, the mixture down into a, a liquid and blending them that way but you are um, using pressure and a combination of pressure and heat uh, you know it's similar uh, centering like in its most basic form would be something like uh, you know smashing a snowball together um, you are centering those uh, snow uh, atoms if you will snowflakes and centering them into a ball uh, anyway uh, tungsten carbide is a very very dense um, it's basically twice the density of uh, traditional steel, as well as twice the stiffness of traditional steel. And that's why they can get away with making this entire blade only 50 thousandths of an inch thick from front to back. Uh, don't think that this is, you know, this isn't a ceramic blade. Um, it's not going to be super brittle. Uh, like I said, it's actually, if you took a piece of steel that was 50 thousandths and hardened it, um, it would be insanely brittle uh, hence why we have pocket knives that uh, have 140 thousandths uh, blade stock within this distal taper which goes down to about 30 thousandths of a tip out here uh, this 50 thousandths uh, blade stock here out of tungsten carbide is more than adequate for this three inch blade in all manner of EDC uh, uh, tasks so, you know, I wouldn't recommend trying to pry open a car door with this because, you know, you definitely can break this, uh, but it's probably tougher than what most people would give it credit for just seeing how thin it is all the way through. Now, because this knife does not have any uh, distal taper, uh, and for those that aren't familiar with the term, uh, the distal taper just refers to the tapering uh, uh, along uh, the length of the blade, the longitudinal tapering there. So um, on this knife, we've got a straight uh, 50 thousandths blade stock. And then we we actually have a hollow grind, uh, but that hollow grind is very, very short. So, so yes, we only have 12 thousandths behind the edge. So you can see that kind of mirrored uh, secondary bevel there. Uh, that is the where the apex is that's the edge that the apex uh, is formed on and then above that uh, from let me grab my calipers here from 
from this, uh, the width of the calipers there, that is an actual hollow ground portion. And then once you get up to this line, uh, this line right here, then you're at 50 thousandths of uh, blade stock. So, so yes, it is 12 thousandths, but very, very quickly it goes to 50 thousandths, uh, which makes this an, an interesting performer. Um, you know, and because the blade is, is carries that same 50 thousandths all the way through, where like on the Spider Co, we have a very consistent flat grind that goes from this thickness up here down to this thickness uh, just below the, uh, the uh, grind there. So we've got this primary grind, which unlike the Torino, the primary grind here is straight up and down. And then, you know, the, the two sides are parallel with one another. And then you've got this short hollow grind going to the actual uh, sharpened edge, uh, which is very, very small. On the Maximet, our primary grind is the taper that runs down to the edge of the knife. And then your secondary uh, is forming the apex on this blade. Uh, cutting performance, uh, I carried and used both of these knives uh, uh, a fair a fair amount. I, this one I carry all the time. Uh, this is my personal knife. You can see I've laser etched my logo into the side of it. Uh, this one here was loaned to me uh, by Stasa23. Um, I'm sure all of you guys, anybody watching this channel, certainly knows who Nick is over at Stasa23. If you don't, definitely go follow his channel. He does some really awesome stuff. Uh, and thanks so much, Nick, for letting me check this out. I, I, this is a super cool knife that totally... Uh, right in my wheelhouse for sure. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, you know, if you are looking for something that isn't going to require a lot of maintenance uh, and edge touch up in that three inch uh, blade length, this really is where you need to go. Um, you know, you're going to be spending right around in that $200 price range, but you're getting the, the pinnacle of uh, you know, what chemistry has to offer right now in the EDC world as far as uh, just badass blades. And and these definitely uh, definitely hold up, uh, you know, just to, to give you some sort of a comparison, you know, you can expect, uh, you know, if we say like just on the average, you know, something compared to like VG10 or something like that uh, would just be an average everyday EDC blade steel. You know, tons of people are carrying stuff that's 8CR, uh, you know, and, and runs the whole lineup. You know, of course, everyone, you know, most people watching this video, you're going to have a bunch of different steels in your collection. But just I'm saying just saying on the average what people carry in their pocket, um, I think it's pretty safe to say that, uh, you know, when comparing it to like 8CR or D2 or, um, you know, VG10, those types of steels, uh, both of these are going to outperform those uh, by a very significant margin. Like the, it's the two really are not comparable. Uh, these two knives right here are going to cut something like uh, you know ten to twenty times as much uh, material depending on what your EDC tasks are. Uh, so you know if if you're looking for something that you don't ever uh, or you rarely have to touch the edge up on. Uh, these really where you need to be focused and uh, you know you can uh, keep these going for a very long time with a little bit of stropping here and there uh, doesn't take a, a long time just to touch them up on a strop and uh, they'll be they'll serve you as really fantastic tools for a very very long time so really cool uh, one thing I did want to check out here uh, I told you that uh, tungsten carbide is twice the density and twice the stiffness. And I'm just kind of curious. Uh, we're going to pop the blades out of both of these and take a little look-see at what, we're, uh, what we've got going on here for the weight on these blades. So, you know what? On, on this one, we're just going to pull it apart completely. Uh so it was a T8 on the pivot, looks like T6 on the clip screw, as well as uh, the body screw. Because of this lock, uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, lock design, and I'll show you how this operates. Let's remove this clip real quick. 
So you can see here, this is kind of Sandrine's uh, logo here with the the uh, different size holes. Um, I can't remember what this is called. This is actually a pattern, uh, and it's two like one millimeter holes, and then a 2.5 or something, and then a 3.5 and a 5, I think. If I remember right, I can't remember. Uh, but uh, it's something in the uh, audio world, I think. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let me see if I can pull this scale without losing anything. Hopefully. Oop. Well, we kind of sort of did. Okay. Now, let me, I'm going to pop this washer off. So, you can see here it's riding on bearings, uh, unlike the pair of three, which is riding on phosphor bronze washers. Uh, we've got ceramic bearings here. And then we have this back, uh, the, the lock here portion. And you can see it's got a spring right there. And so the spring is providing tension off of that backspacer, uh, pushing in that direction. So it's pushing the lock bar that way. And let me grab this. I'm just going to grab this spring out of here so we don't end up yeeting it across the room. Uh, you know, that happens from time to time. So here is your little coil spring. Okay, now we can do this without any stress. Uh, so you can see on the end here, and I'm assuming that this, uh, uh, the lock bar is made out of tungsten carbide as well. I don't know that 100%, uh, but I think you would end up with some wear right on that tip, especially how tiny it is um, if you didn't use tungsten carbide there. But so you can see how this operates. When I open the blade up, it pushes that lock bar back and that's what's creating your detent is you can see that those shapes right there that interface so you come over the detent and then that rides on the blade tang all the way around and then it almost acts like a compression lock when when it jams in between the blade tang and so you're you're capturing um, that between this stop pin so you can see here that the blades up against the stop pin up here uh, the lock bar is squeezed or shoved between the stop pin and this uh, area here and that keeps the blade locked up uh, and that spring pressure is providing that tension pushing the lock bar in that direction so if i pull the lock bar back out of that area and now the blade is able to freely rotate again so that's how that lock operates um, it, it's a good lock. It seems to work quite well. Um, so no issues with that. And personally, uh, just from a comfort standpoint, I'll set that down for a moment. Um, you can see the jimping on the lock. It is a bit sharp on the end here, but I personally, I like to actuate it with my thumb and not my finger. Uh, so when I'm holding this, I'm actuating it here like this with my thumb. I've seen some people uh, use their index finger. Um, it's a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit sharp uh, to do with your index finger. The thumb just works better for me. But the lock is is certainly adequate and, and I think, uh, you know, fairly innovative. Um, like I said, the mechanics of it um, are, are very similar to other style locks on the market. Uh, just the implementation and the way you actuate it is slightly different than a than a few other ones out there, and and therefore it's gotten, uh, you know, it's considered to be a new lock, if you will. All right, we're also going to pull this pair of three out, uh, pull the blade out of this knife. Uh, set that down here. So on the pair of three, you've got a T10 pivot. Uh, oop with a uh, T8 body screw and I'm just going to rotate this out of the way pull this out and get this washer off of here so you can see there phosphor bronze washers okay so here's our two blades 
uh, we can see that they are very, very similar in length. We can put them side by side, kind of line up the pivot holes, and they are very, very close. Um, as far as the thickness is concerned, let me do have some oil on here, but I'm going to stick the the thumb stud uh, through the hole on the Spyderco so you can see a ma major, major difference in thickness. Um, the uh, the pair of three back here where it's the full thickness, it's about three times uh, what this tungsten carbide blade is. But um, I'm guessing, I don't know this for sure, but I'm guessing that these are going to be very, very close in weight. So let's see what we're working with here. Uh, okay, scale's already set up in grams. Let's throw down the pair of three. So we have 34.25 grams on the Para 3 Maximet blade. So 34 and a quarter on the Sandrine Torino, which is only 50 thousandths thick and very, very similar in length. Uh, so about a third again thinner, or not a third, a third the thickness. Uh, uh, it is 29.79 point, we're going to, really close to 30 grams so there's about uh we're gonna call it about five grams difference uh not quite five grams difference between these two blades but yet there is a massive difference in the volume that they displace so for the volume this tungsten carbide is very very heavy um give you an idea here on that so We'll measure this in millimeters. So 3.67 uh, millimeters uh, stock thickness on the pair of three and on the tungsten carbide, 1.33 millimeters. So yeah, the, the Maximet is basically three times thicker uh, back here. And then you have this distal taper. So this is 50 thousandths. Let's see where the, the Spyderco blade, oh, I'm going to switch this back. Let's see where it goes and ends up being 50 thou. Right there. 50 thousandths exactly. Oh, 49. Sorry. 50 thousandths. 50 thousandths right there. And you can see... So right there is where it is the exact same thickness as the Sandrine blade. The rest of it is thicker all the way to this point right here, where this whole area is three times thicker than the Sandrine blade. So you can see that uh, by weight, uh, there is just a massive difference in these two uh, materials, the tungsten carbide versus the Maximet steel. So let's... Uh, We'll throw this back together real quick. Pair of three, real, real simple. If you take it apart that way, um, just rotate that around. Okay. We'll throw this screw back in. All right, and then let's uh, let's get the uh, the old Torino put back together here. Um, so you've got, like I said, uh, it's riding on bearings. I'm going to use this clip to hold this blade up so it's not wanting to fall down, um, and then this uh, pin in the back came out. That's a tiny little pin. Okay. All right. And actually, I'm going to put a couple drops of a lubricant on this bar just because it slides between the two G10 scales. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit on here, and I don't want much. Like so, 
maybe put just the tiniest bit right up in here just so it can move freely okay there we go drop this down on here like so okay all right now i'm going to push that lock up into its fully locked uh, position and now i'm going to put the bearing and washer in place um, and then we are going to compress this spring and I'm just using a pair of tweezers here to do this um, actually drop that thing does not want to sit down in there very well but I think we should be in good shape right there and Perfect. Uh, I had my T8 on here. Get that screw in, and then we'll get this one body screw in, and then we'll be in good shape. here so you can see there um, and this lock pulls back I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not actually I have that a little too tight back there this knife is one that is uh, very critical on uh, getting things uh, too tight or this lock bar will not be able to to move freely so you definitely need uh, the lock bar to move back and forth perfect so for me you know the thumb stud works great and then dropping it just like that so when you pull it back with your thumb you can see that the the finger choil comes down so there's no risk of you know the cutting edge coming down and getting you and then rotate it and kind of whip it down uh, works well like i said i've seen several people use the index finger uh, which certainly can work but it is a little sharp for that but in my opinion the thumb works great and yeah so there you go guys that's uh an in-depth look at the uh sandrine torino and the uh, tungsten carbide blade as far as i know uh sandrine is really the the only uh production company anyway working with tungsten carbide uh on any sort of regular basis uh there are tons of things out there that are made uh, with tungsten carbide um, a lot of machining tools a lot of uh, woodworking tools a lot of you know anything that needs really good uh, edge retention uh, a lot of tungsten carbide like most uh uh, router bits and stuff um, the actual cutting surface is tungsten carbide so there's a lot of things out there that are tungsten carbide uh, now this knife got quite a bit of heat uh, because the lack of finish 
um, you can see that tungsten carbide does polish very well, like the edge here. And on a lot of their older models, that's what they did. That's the way they finished the blade. Um, I personally don't care about the scratch marks. Uh, this comes from the surface grinding that they do. And that's why the scratch marks are in a bunch of different directions. Uh, so when, you know, uh, you're lapping or, or surface grinding, uh, there's machines that uh, are a circular type surface grinder where they would uh, put the blades in and, and uh, run them against two spinning opposing surfaces uh, that uh, generally have got some sort of industrial sort of diamond abrasive. Uh, because while working with tungsten carbide, it's going to take some real serious abrasives to uh, grind these. And that's why you see these thin blade stocks with just the very edges ground. And they're not doing like a full flat grind or a, a, a big hollow grind like we're used to seeing on traditional steels. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that uh, deep look into the Sandrin Torino as well as the Maximet Para 3. And if you're looking for a serious performer in that three inch blade size, uh, here's where you want to be right here. So thanks so much, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm out. Hey!